Welcome students, welcome to the module 2 unit process and unit operation in chemical technology. So in last module we have already discussed about the orientation to the chemical technology, chemical industry and the different aspects of the chemical industry in India. So today we will shortly discuss about the unit processes and the unit operation that are required in the chemical technology. So the objective of today's model is to know about the unit processes in chemical technology and then we will study the unit operation and how they are represented symbolically. So if you see the process flow diagrams in the further models, you will see there are many symbols given. So we have to discuss what the symbol represents for. So for this one we have to go through the unit operations. So why we need to study this one? So unit process and the unit operation concept you have to discuss first. So the commercial production is nothing but a function of chemical changes plus physical changes occurring. So we have to discuss the chemical changes occurring in the process as well as the physical changes. Like if you take the example in a reaction of the soap, then chemical changes means oil plus caustic soda which gives soaps and the physical changes will be to solidify it and then we have to pack them in a proper packing. So for a commercial production chemical changes as well as the physical changes are necessary. Then we will discuss the fundamentals of unit processes which are required to carry out the chemical reaction. So as far as the chemical engineer is considered he should know the fundamentals of unit processes because based on that only he can deal with the chemical changes occurring in the process. Then it will take with the use of a series of unit operation and that are required to handle problems of physical changes. And to have a successful chemical engineer and to have a successful product we should have the knowledge of permutation and combination of both required to produce good quality chemical products economically. So for a chemical engineer he will do the permutation and combination and he will achieve the product economically means how to reduce the price of the products by knowledge of unit operations and the unit processes. So what he will do in order to have the chemical changes he will apply the chemical process or unit processes effectively which can yield and which can have the more conversion as well as the physical changes he will use the knowledge of unit operation. So both this knowledge is required to produce the good quality chemicals also we have to produce them economically. So we will discuss what are the unit processes. So first one will be the alkylation means the introduction of the alkyl group. So addition of alkyl radical with the side chain final product. So the example may be fiddle crop reaction. So if you take the example, so one butylin is reacted with isobutin, isobutane and which gives the product 2 to 4 trimethyl pentane or isooctane. So this is, this reaction is mainly used in petroleum organic chemicals. The next one is amination by ammonolysis means the addition of ammonia or reaction with ammonia. So ethylene dichloride when reacted with ammonia it yields ethylene diamine. So you can see the amine group is introduced at the product side. And the adipic acid when reacted with ammonia give adiponitrile. So this kind of reaction is mainly used in dye stuff then organic chemical production and synthetic fiber production. The next one is amination by reduction reaction means same amine introduction but with the use of reduction reaction. So 2 nitroparaffin when reacted with hydrogen it gives isopropyl amine. So same way it will be used in diastrop and organic chemicals. The next reaction comes is the amoxidation that means reaction with ammonia and the oxygen. So propylene when reacted with ammonia in presence of oxygen it will yield acrylonitrile which is used in plastic and synthetic fiber industry. The next one is calcination. So what does calcination means? So calcination is the heat treatment 
and to carry out the decomposition. So it is mainly the calcination of the ores. So if we hit it limestone, it will yield the lime and it will evolve the CO2. So this reaction is mainly used in cement industry. The carbonylation or the reaction with carbon dioxide, so when methanol is reacted with carbon monoxide, it will yield the acidic acid. So generally carbonylation is used in organic chemicals. Then carboxylation, this is nothing but the reaction with CO2. So it will, this reaction is mainly used for the production of organic chemicals. And the combustion reaction which we are already familiar, so methane when combusted, it will yield the CO2 and H2O and the energy. So the combustion is mainly used for the process heating. The next reaction comes is the condensation. Condensation means two molecules they will react and they will combine evolving other molecule like benzaldehyde plus acetaldehyde. In presence of the base catalyst, it will give cinnamaldehyde with the evolution of H2O. So you can see benzaldehyde and acetaldehyde, they have condensed to form the cinnamaldehyde with the evolution of a water molecule. The next reaction is phthalic anhydride with benzene, it, it gives anthroquinone. And this reaction is used in organic chemicals and dye stuffs. So anthroquinone, which has the very good redox properties. The next important reaction in petroleum and destruction distillation of a coal is the cracking or pyrolysis. So cracking, its word it means the breakdown. So a long chain carbon molecule or the high molecular weight carbon molecule is broken down into the simple carbon molecules. So the cracking you can see the long chain carbon molecule is cracked to get the simpler. So a petroleum products they are cracked to form the petrol or diesel products. So when they are cracked they will form the simpler carbon products. And that can be distilled out and we get the naphtha, diesel and petrol and so on. The next reaction is cyanidation or cyanation. Cyanation means the introduction of the CN group in the product. So to introduce the CN group we are using the HCN which is reacted with acetylene giving acrylonitrile. This is mainly used to synthesis the organic chemicals. The next reaction is cyclization. The name itself, it lead to the cyclic product. So you can see the reaction which is used in petroleum industry. The next is dehydration or the removal of water molecule. So ethyl alcohol, when dehydrated, it will give ethylene. And the calcium hydroxide by the evolution of water molecule can yield calcium oxide or we can say lime. So this is mainly used in synthesis of organic chemicals and inorganic chemicals. The dehydrogenation which means the removal of hydrogen or we can say the introduction of the unsaturation in the final products. So one butene which has the one double bond when dehydrogenated it will yield one three butadiene and that one three butadiene we can use to Synthesis, synthetic rubber. The diazotization and coupling. So diazotization means to have the diazo ion and then we have to couple. So reaction says the formation of RN2Cl. So N2 plus is the diazo which is then reacted to form the N double bond N which is nothing but the azo group. So first one is diazotization and then Coupling means reaction with other molecule to have the end double on end that is azo. So this is mainly used in dye stuff industry. So end double bond end is the group which is called azo group which gives the colors. So many dyes you have seen which is very colorful in nature. So that color is nothing but the property of end double bond end. So if we break the end double bond end azo group the color property is no more visible in that compound. So this is the main 
bond which gives colors to the dyes and dye stuff they are used for the dyeing industry the next one is disproportionation reaction so disproportionation means it will simultaneously oxidize and reduce so propylene which gives ethylene and butylene so you can see at the product they are reduced and they are oxidized so this reaction is mainly used in organic chemicals so now next reaction is double decomposition or metathesis so double decomposition means it will interchange the molecules or it will interchange the groups so coh twice plus h2so4 that is calcium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid if you can see at the product line the sulfate group is taken by calcium whereas the hydroxyl is reacted to give the water molecules so it is mainly used in the inorganic chemical production the next one is esterification means to form the rcor so when alcohol is reacted with acid which gives the ester so here the alcohol mainly used is the fatty alcohol and this rcoh is mainly is the fatty acid so fatty acid we generally get from the oils whereas the fatty alcohols we get generally from the waxes so wax is nothing but a ester and which is made by the reaction of alcohol and the fatty acid so roh plus rcoh by the evolution of h2 gives a ester and roh which is acid which combines with sulfuric acid which gives the sulfate molecule sulfate group so this is mainly used in iron fat industry soap industry and organic chemical industry the next unit process is halogenation that means introduction of the halogen group so ethylene combines with chlorine to give ethylene dichloride and the toluene reacted with chlorine to give the benzyl chloride so this is used in organic chemical synthesis the next one is hydration means introduction of the water so when ethene is hydrated which gives the ethyl alcohol and the lime when hydrated gives back calcium hydroxide so mainly used in synthesis of organic chemicals and inorganic chemicals the next one is hydroformylation or we can say to get a group with additional carbon or to have the reaction which will yield cho group so when rch double bond ch2 any olefin is reacted with carbon monoxide and h2 it will yield the aldehyde group so mainly it is done to get the organic chemicals the next one is hydrogenation that means reaction with the hydrogen this is mainly to get the olefins to the saturated alkenes so this is used in fat and waxes the coal hydrogenation petroleum and the synthesis of organic chemicals next reaction is hydrolysis means the reaction with water molecules so chlorobenzene when reacted with the water gives phenol and the hcl the next one is hydroxylation so when an alcohol is reacted with ethylene oxide it gives you the polymer chain so hydroxylation is generally used for detergent manufacture so the non ionic surfactants gives utilizes this kind of reaction so we are reacting any alcohol with ethylene oxide then it will depend upon how many molecules of ethylene oxide that are reacted with the alcohol and that will lead to the chain in the non ionic surfactant at the product side so here we can find the o and h group that will yield the surfactant property and r is being the fatty it is insoluble whereas the other which is which are having o and oh group they are water loving so hydrophobic and hydrophilic group we can find in the product side and that lead to the surfactant property the next reaction is isomerization so in presence of heat and catalyst the molecules can be isomerized into but with the same carbon number so that is generally used in petroleum industry so you can see straight carbon chain we can 
isomerize and we can have the branch chain branch chain carbon so generally if you want to have the more octal number we can use this kind of reaction the next one is nitration or the introduction of the nitro group so when any cyclic compound when reacted with the nitric acid which gives the nitro benzene so in this one you can see the benzene is reacted with the nitric acid which gives the nitro benzene so here you can see it's the cyclohexane but it should be the benzene so you can correct that one the next one you can see the introduction of the nitro 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 group to have the nitro paraffins so this is generally used to get the explosives and in diastereomer industry and to get the organic chemicals the next you can find the oligomerization oligomerization means in product you can find more than one monomer present so if we take the three moles of one three beta ion it will yield one phenyl cyclododecatriene so this is used for in organic chemicals you can find in the product there are more than one monomer present in oxidation we react the compound with oxygen to build the products so here you can find the it methane is reacted with the oxygen to yield the unsaturated compound so this is generally used for the generation of the organic chemicals the next one is polymerization so two kinds of polymerization reaction we can see one is addition polymerization and the next one is condensation polymerization so addition polymerization it will lead that the monomer is added one by one to give a polymeric chain whereas in condensation two molecules comes and they will evolve a water type molecules means they will condense together so when there are more than one monomer they condense they will lead the polymer chain so if we take the example of addition polymerization ethylene monomer then it will react with same kind of it to give the dimer so ethylene dimer you can see and when this reaction continues it will yield you polyethylene then polyvinyl monomer when reacted give the dimer and then it will lead the polyvinyl polymer so you can see over here is nothing but the addition polymerization if we see the condensation polymerization we can see the evolution of the water molecule so in the first reaction we can see two molecules are condensed to evolve the water molecules and this reaction will go on to give the polymeric reaction the next one is ethylene glycol when reacted with terephthalic acid it give alkyl resistant h2o so the same polymer reaction you have seen in the formation of nylon 6 and nylon 66 where the water molecules evolve to give the polymers the next reaction is reduction reaction so you can see tcl4 so in this one ti is in plus 4 state which is reduced to the ti plus 3 so reduction either reaction with hydrogen or the oxidation oxidation state is changed from higher to lower side so this is mainly used for the polymer catalyst manufacture then next reaction is sulfonation or the introduction of the sulfate group so when benzene reacted with sulfuric acid giving benzo sulfonate so this is mainly used for diastereomer industry and sulfate active agent that is surfactant manufacture then thionation which gives sulfur in the final product so beta ion when reacted with sulfur gives thiophene and the h2s hydrogen sulfide and then alcohol with h2s give the sulfur addition in the methane group and he was the water so this is mainly used in the formation of the organic chemicals so now after unit processes we will discuss unit operation with symbols and their industrial use so first we will start with the distillation so distillation nothing but if the compounds they are differing in their boiling point then we can heat them so those having lower boiling point they will get into the vapor phase whereas those who are having high boiling point they will settle down so by this means we can separate them so this is distillation process so we can have the distillation one is batch distillation another is continuous distillation so in a batch distillation 
it is mainly used for the intermittent operation and handling small volumes of feeds and product whereas the continuous fractionator the means the separator so this we can use for the high volume and the continuous separation of complex mixtures such as petroleum fractions the second unit operation is drying of solids the first one is spray dryer if you can see in symbol is spray drying the product will come from the top and it is sprayed down in the dryer and it is in spray form then it is heated the product get instantaneously dried and we can remove so this is suitable for the large capacity operation on liquid feed to give powders spherical free flowing product and used used for the production of pigment detergent synthetic resins and miscellaneous organic salts the next come is the rotary dryer so you can see as the symbol represent it is suitable for the drying of free flowing granular solids which do not dust or stick and high temperature versions are kilns for the calcining cement and lime etc the next dryer comes is the tunnel dryer you can see is applicable to drying paste or powders in trays also used to dry pottery the lumber leather etc in sheet or shape forms so in so this kind of dryers so here this spraying is occurring here is the rotation and then heating for the drying process and here we have the blocks in which the drying operation is taking place the next process is evaporation so in open pan we can have the evaporation so this is used for the small batches and oftenly for the viscous materials and such designs are easy to clean but when we want to have the multiple effects means more than one is present so this is to achieve the maximum heat economy in evaporation of paper mill black liquor sugar syrups and solution of inorganic chemicals so you can see over here the heat which is not used for the evaporation can be used for the other operations so here the heat which is wasting we can use again so that it will have the maximum heat economy so that we can achieve when we have the multiple effects evaporators the next process comes to extraction so extraction means we are particularly extract one thing from other by the use of solvent so in chemical industry different kinds of extraction process are there like liquid liquid extraction so here we are using a solvent to extract material from other liquid so here used to contact solvent and feed to give raffinate and extract widely adapted to removal of naphthalenes from lube oil fractions using solvents such as perforal so in liquid liquid extraction if one one component is soluble in other component preferentially then we can use this kind of liquid one thing we have to note here that two liquids we are using they should be insoluble to each other whereas solute should be preferentially soluble in a liquid which we are using also the solvent which we are using which dissolve the solute in the solvent should be easily removable from the sol the solid so that we can separate the solid which is dissolved then next come is solid liquid so this is term as the leaching so here involves the removal of solid from a solid by means of a liquid solvent often used in over treatment to recover metal values so in our it is finely granulated then we will use the solvent which will dissolve the metal or the material which is of our own interest and then we can remove solvent and we can get the metal in a purified form or in a compound form that which we can uh, treat later on so this process is called the leaching then in chemical industry we have to handle the high quantity of fluids so you can see over here the pumps are used so there are central pump reciprocating pump and jet injector ejector so the pump you are already familiar in fluid mechanics lab the all pumps which are used in the fluid mechanics lab they are the centrifugal pumps so centrifugal pump action you already know and this symbol also you have already used so this is most widely used for the liquids of all types simple in construction and maintenance whereas reciprocating pump is generally used for the high pressure delivery 
may be used for metering or proportioning. Then the jet ejector is mainly used for the production of vacuum. The next one is also familiar to is fluid solid contacting. So the pack bed and fluid as bed, you have already seen in fluid mechanics lab. So same you can see over here. The first one is fixed bed. It is most widely used type of catalyte reactor used with precious metal catalyst to minimize attrition or the erosion losses. And catalyst usually in the form of pellets. Whereas in fluid bed, used to contact final divided solids with reactant gases, example cracking catalyst with oil used in roasting of sulphide ores to give oxides and SO2. So in fixed bed, we have seen how it works and in fluidized bed also the working mechanism you have seen. Also in fluid mechanics course you have learned about the fluidization. So that will help to learn more about the fluid bed and the packed bed. The next come is the moving bed. So here it combines the virtue of fixed bed reactor with the ability to regenerate catalyst by movement to separate regeneration zone. So catalyst which need to be regenerated time to time for this one we can use the moving bed. Next one comes as the separation. So fluid solid separation. So one thing is centrifugation. So in centrifugation you can see the more heavy particle will have experience more force and they will be thrown towards periphery. So it is used to separate very finely divided solids from a liquid or liquid liquid from liquid emulsions. So when we add there and if we apply the centrifugal force, the more heavy will go to the periphery which we can separate and the other one will remain in the center that we can separate later on. The next one is settling tank. So in settling tank you can see the down area is converging. So here what happens when we keep the things to be separated, the more heavy particles that will settle down in settling tank. So this is the simple device used to remove large particle from gas stream by simple settling in lower velocity zone. The next one comes is wet scrubber. So it is effectively used for removing suspended particle from gas stream by contact with the liquid shower. So you can see liquid shower from here it will be spread and that will lead to the separation of the suspended particles. So when gas is filled the suspended particles when mixed with the water or the liquid stream, they will be settled down and we can separate them from the gas. The next one is crystallizer. crystallizer. So in this one, we are using this for nearly saturated solution and they are stirred over here and they are cooled to have the nucleation and the crystal growth. And this is widely used for the inorganic solids. So here you can see in crystallizer, we are using a solid which will lead to the crystallized solid substance dissolved in the liquid. So that crystallization, we will allow them to happen and then we can remove it. The next one is rotary filter. So here the vacuum is applied to the interior of the drum. So you can have the vacuum applied in interior so that what it will do, it will pull out the filtrate out of the cake. So this is used to separate minerals from the slurries, pulp, fibers from water and etc. In the filter press you can see many kind of presses are there, in bags are there so we can simply press them and we can remove the solvent. So this is mainly used for the, for the corrosion resistance materials. So it is the simplest type of pressure fiber widely used, plates and fabric filter media may be made up of variety of corrosion resistance materials. So that will lead to the separation by pressing the filters. The next one comes with the cyclone separator. So you can see this is the symbol for cyclone separation. So this is mainly used in environmental engineering. So it is used to separate solid particles of liquid droplets from gases to permit product recovery or to cut down the product loss and the air pollution. <laughs> The next one is electrostatic precipitator. So you can see over here, this is a rod which is positively charged. So suppose any suspended particles, they are of negatively charged, so they will be attracted toward this one and then we can separate it from the down. Whereas those who are not attracted, they will settle over here. 
or we can remove from the other end. So it is used to remove fine dust or means suspended in gases, which has high collection efficiency at wide variety of operating conditions. So this we can use when particles are charged. The next come is the bag, bag filter. So the batteries of tubular fabric bags are mounted so solids may be removed continuously by flow reversal and mechanical shaking. So you can see mechanical shaking will occur and through the bag they will be separated that we can collect later. The next one is thickener classifier. So used to separate slurry into sludges and clear liquid and widely in mineral industries and in sewage effluent classification. The next unit operation is fluid storage. The first one is gas holders. Used for low pressure storage of gases at constant pressure using liquid, still usually water. The next one is tank, widely used for storage of liquid of all type, usually at atmospheric pressure, may have the floating roof. The next one is pressurized spheres. So in this one, it is used for, uh, for pressurized storage of liquefied gases of or high vapor pressure liquids to permit safe storage with no vapor losses. And the next one is underground camels or underground the structure used for the large volume storage of liquids or of liquefied gases. The next one comes is the gas liquid contacting. So first, the contacting made by absorption or by stripping. Then absorption is for taking up, taking up a solution, soluble glass, gas in a solvent liquid and producing a solution plus for a exist gas using the H2S removal from the hydrocarbons. And the stripping used for the removal of a soluble gas from the solution by counter current contact with an inert gas. The next one comes with the heat exchanger. So first one is fired heater and the other is reboiler one. So in heat exchanger, they are mainly used to heat petroleum fractions to distillation or cracking temperature in the direct fire tubes. So here, the temperature will be raised and that we can use to crack the petroleum. The next one is reboiler. So you can see this is the lower section part of a distillation. So here the feed is there. If the temperature is lower down, then we can feed again to the heat exchanger or reboiler that will heat up again and it will fit to the reactor or the distillation column. So this is uses natural circulation to circulating fractionation tower bottom in heat action with the streams. The next one is condenser. So condenser name suggests it will condense the liquid. So you can see this is the distillation column and that will form the liquid. Suppose the proportion is not good or not of the desired one, then we can recirculate in the column, otherwise we can re remove them from top. So they are generally water cooled tubular construction to provide reflux and overhead product from the fractionating column. The next comes is the shale and, shale and tube exchanger. So this is, these are the type device for the process heat exchange. The next one is jacketed kettle, you can see the jacket over here, in which we can circulate the hot liquid and that will work as the heat exchanger. So this is common construction for reaction kettles. Water or brand may be used for cooling hot water, oil or down for heating. The next one is direct mixing or quenching. What we will do? We will directly mix the coolant and that will quench. So this is used in hydrocarbon pyrolysis to acetylene. The next term is dialysis or the membrane separation process in a dialysis. So dialysis you can see is the removal of the component by the use of the membrane. So very good, of ex very good example of dialysis is the kidney. So when kidney failure is there, we can use the dialysis. But in industry, it is used to separate materials which has widely different solubilities or widely different molecular weights. So the example is caustic soda from the sugar or cellular juice. The next one is gas gaseous diffusion. So we have the membrane, when we want to separate uranium-235 from the uranium-238 mixture, so will the membrane that will preferentially allow only uranium-235 to pass through it. So this is used to concentrate the one particular component. The membrane which is used should be preferential for the one component only. The next operation is mix mixing. 
So here first one is agitation. So it is mainly used for the liquid liquid and solid mixing in a single compartment. Next one is solid blending. So you can see over here, this is mountain on the poles which is rotated. So it will rotate and the metal inside will be mixed well inside. The next one come is this side reduction and enlargement. So when we want this lower size, we can use this kind of unit operation. The first one is crushing. So this is mainly used to reduce size up to 4. And then next come is grinding. So in grinder you can see the heavy balls are used and the material to be grinded is kept in between. So the balls, when it's rotated, they will collide with each other and the material comes in between them that will be crushed. So this is mainly used to reduce the size. Next one is pelletizing. So it is used to make tablet from powders of medicine and catalyst. Next one, how to handle the solids. So first one is pneumatic conveying. So you can see it's used originally for grain, now is widely for the cement, catalyst, coke and powder chemicals. So you can see the pneumatic conveyor. So construction work is going on over here. So you can see the pneumatic conveyors that are used to move the concrete from the lower level to the higher level. So this kind of things you can see when the construction site is going on. So mainly used for the cement or the concrete movement. The next one is bucket elevators. So this is used for elevating materials and can be used for moving powder granules materials to and from storage or between reaction vessels as in moving bed catalyst processes. The next one is screw conveyor. So this screw that will move and that will move the material from one end to other end. So this is versatile, can be used to mix and heat or cool, can be operated under pressure, useful for powders or sticky materials. The next come is belt conveyor. So this will move and that will pass the material. So it is, can be used to handle large volume over a long distances economically, used near horizontal building, maybe fabric or rubber. The next one comes is the solid-solid separation. So first one is screening. So, so it will, it is used for, for the separation of the solid particles. So it is made up of wire, plastic or the fabric screens. And it is generally used to separate the solids of varying size. The next one is illustration. So in this one what happens, we pass the air at a very force, so the particles which are of lighter weight, they will be separated from the higher. Generally this process we use in the villages to separate the grain from the husk. So same way here also, if you want to separate the heavy particles from the lighter one, then we can use the illustration. The next one is froth protection. So this is mainly used in the metallurgical science. What we are doing, the finer ground material is suspended in water and then we are the surfactant. So it will float above and then we can remove. So the surfactant which weights the material, the metallurgy ore that can be separated in form of the froth. So gas is mainly passed to have the froth at the top of the liquid level. The next one is jigging. So jigging, so namely the jig word is used for the fishing. So here what we are doing, we are separating particle from the higher particle based on their sizes. So here, it is one of the oldest processes used for the separation of heavy minerals from lighter ranges as well as for the separating coal from heavier contaminant. The next one is the magnetic separation. So this is used for the material which are magneting in nature. So you can see the material is passed and the magnet will attract the magnetic material towards it, whereas Material, they are not attracted and we can remove from here. So here the magnetic material you can see stick over, we can remove from this end, whereas non-magnetic is come from here. So this is generally used to concentrate the magnetic ion and ores. So this unit processes and unit operation you can mainly find in the Dryden's outline of chemical technology. So read about the processes and just try to find out more unit operation and more unit processes. So as far as the chemical engineers consider, we have already discussed 
So unit of processes and unit of operation, they have to combine in such a way that to get higher yield, higher conversion and higher yield of the process. We will discuss about PFD, BFD and PNID in the next module.